xlookup is a brilliant function, but one of the challenges is trying to use it when you have multiple criteria. In today's video, I'll show you two methods we can use to get around this. The first, using a helper column, and the second, without. And it's simpler than you might think. If you find this video useful, please hit that like button as it goes a long way for my small channel. Now, let's dive straight in. We've been set a task to pull the salaries for each individual in the employee table on the left, based on their location and their job type. The salaries are all contained within the salary table on the right. As the salary table is holding only unique combinations, we could use the sumis function to pull the salary value, but we're going to take a look at how we can achieve this using the xlookup function. The simplest approach to tackle this problem would be to set up a help column for the lookup array on the salary table. In column I, I'll type equals F3 ampersand G3, which will concatenate these two text strings together. Press enter and copy that down. This has now created a column we can use to look up in for our two criteria, so we can now create our X lookup formula. In cell D3, type equals X lookup and open the parenthesis. To create the lookup value, we need to perform a similar operation to what we've just done for our help column. So we'll select the cell B3, type an ampersand, and then select cell C3. Type a comma to move on to the lookup array, which is the help column we created earlier. Select the range and press F4 to lock it. Press a comma and select the salary range and press F4 to lock that one too and then press enter. Double click the fill handle to copy it down. We can manually check the first one by looking in the salary table down to Winchester and warehouse and can confirm the value is correct. Using this method is nice and simple, but sometimes you really don't want to add additional columns to your spreadsheet. So let's move on to achieve the same outcome without the help column. Back in cell D3, type equals x lookup and open the parenthesis again. This time, the lookup value needs to be one and we'll come back to why this is later. Type a comma to move on to the lookup array argument. This is where we're going to create two lookup arrays. Open another set of parenthesis for our first lookup. We'll select the location range in the salary table and fix it by pressing F4. This is the range we want to search to find the location from our employee table. Next. Press equals and then select the location cell in the employee table so it knows what location it is it's looking for. Close that set of parenthesis and that's our first lookup done. The two lookups need to be separated by an asterisk. For the second lookup, we'll do exactly the same thing but for job type. Now we've created both our lookups, we can move on to the return array by pressing comma. As in the first example, this is simply the salary range in our salary table. And again, we need to fix this by pressing F4. Close the function out by closing both set of parentheses, press enter and copy it down. As you can see, we get exactly the same result as before. So let's delve into how this works exactly by first taking a look at what is happening in those two lookup arrays we created. Come into the formula bar and highlight all the values within the set of parentheses for the first lookup array. Then go to the formula tab on the top and over to the calculate now button. The shortcut key for this is F9. This now shows us the result of this calculation as true and false values. If the value in the salary table does not match the criteria value from our employee table, for example in this first case Winchester, then it will return a false value. But if it does match it, it will return a true value. So we get false, false, false for London, but then true, true, true when it gets to Winchester. The same can be seen in the second lookup array as it searches for the word warehouse. I've set out the formula so we can see the first lookup array directly above the second. And what we're looking for is where we have two true values, one above the other, which is the fifth instance. This shows us where the exact match has been found. Each false value within Excel is returned as a zero and each true value is returned as a one. So the reason the two criteria are separated with multiplication symbol 
is that it now performs that multiplication. The only value of 1 that is returned is where there are two true values. The others are all returned as zero values, and we can see this by highlighting everything including the parenthesis for the two lookup arrays and pressing F9. This is why our lookup value at the start needs to be 1. I hope this video has provided you another tool in your toolkit you can utilise. Thanks for watching. See you next time.